All right, guys. So on this video, I'm going to show you how to take a brand new power supply unit and actually install it in pretty much any of the arcade games you can think about, okay? We're going to install this power supply unit in my heavy barrel game. The PSU in the heavy barrel game I had originally actually fried out on me. So that's not going to work out when I want to go ahead and sell the game. At this point, this power supply has not been removed from the box. This is straight right from the box if you buy a brand new power supply. Not a used one, but a brand new one. So you can see, we'll go ahead and open the box up, and there's our power supply unit. The little bag that comes with it, these are the mounting plates used to actually mount the power supply. It comes with two plates and a few screws, alright? So, let's take the power supply out of here. As you can see, it's shiny brand new. It's a Suzu hat, which is what I recommend anybody get. I have never had a single problem with the Suzu hat power supply. Not a single time. Um, and they're pretty inexpensive. Like, they range anywhere from about $40 shipped up to about $65 shipped depending on where you get them from. So we'll go ahead and take this protector off. As you can see, we have a positive 5, we have two grounds, a negative 5, positive 12, a field ground, and an AC line, an AC neutral. Okay? So, some of the key things we need to do, as you can tell, it's just a raw power supply with no mounts. We need to put our mounts on here real fast, okay? So, we'll take that little bag that I just showed you. We'll grab one of the mounts out of it. And it's going to go like this, okay? You can flip it this way if you want to. It all depends on how your game is set up. But mine is set up in the manner so you have the highest elevation like this, okay? So, let me get a couple of screws out of here, and I'll give you a quick example on how we set this bad boy up. If I can get all the screws out that I need. There we go. Whoops. Screws fell out all over the place. It's okay, though. Not a big deal. It does come with an extra screw, which is kind of nice. Okay, so, the most basic part to it, get your screw and your screwdriver, and let's get this bad boy mounted. Now again, like most things, you don't want to tighten down your screw all the way, okay? You're going to want to get it started first. Keep it as square as you can. Just like so. We'll do the same with the other side. And once we get that done, we'll be right back. Okay, guys? Alright, so basically when you get them on, this is what it should look like. So we have our mounting plates on. Alright? So we'll flip the power supply over. What we need to do, before we even attempt to hook this up to a PCB board, we need to hook up our AC uh, inputs here so we can adjust the 5 volt rail alrighty we need to make sure that our 5 volt is anywhere between 5.1 and 5.2 5.1 is the most ideal position okay you know sometimes these power supplies are not adjusted the way you want them to be they could be 5.5 or way lower than that obviously if it's way lower it's not going to affect your uh, game board but if you have like say 5.5 or 5.8 or 6.2 or whatever you might fry your game board don't take the risk on that make sure you check this first okay so adjusting this here 
what we need to do is loosen our AC neutral and our AC lines and then hook up our test cord now technically speaking you should use a field ground I just don't because this is just a quick little make sure that my voltages are correct because inside the game itself has all the uh, the field grounds hooked up and everything so I'm not worried about that this is going to be a very short little procedure here so we got that all set up as you can see so what we're going to do from here is we're going to plug in the power supply and then we're going to set our voltmeter up so you can actually see our voltage adjustments okay so let me get you guys set up and you can see this a little bit better so we'll be right back again okay so we're back with my multimeter here and as you can see I have it set up on 20 volts DC the way you can tell especially with my multimeter is you see that straight line right there next to the V that straight line means direct current or DC which is what the output of this power supply is okay I'll make a separate video on how to understand a multimeter but for right now that's all you kind of really need to know to make things easier so you don't have to take your probes and actually physically hold them on your points and everything what I'm gonna do sorry about that scraping sound here is I'm gonna loosen the screw for the positive five on the ground and then I'm gonna literally just tighten down the probe leads on these two points it'll just make it easier so I don't have to worry about holding these probes and accidentally shorting anything out or moving them in a spot that I don't want to move them into okay just takes a quick second to make sure you got them tightened down real good. So you want to have the best contact you can get without making any shorts happen. Okay? Now, just so you know, you see this adjustment knob right here? I'm going to be using a flat blade screwdriver to make adjustments to the voltage itself. Alright? Uh, you don't have to. You can actually use your hand. I'm going to probably end up using my hand on this one, just so you know. But, we'll get that put to the side. And what we're going to do is adjust this, so give me half a second, right to the multimeter. So let's zoom in. There we go. Alright, so we're zoomed in on the display. And what we're going to do is we're going to power up the power supply itself when the meter's on. As you can see, there's no voltages, okay? So we'll go ahead and power this up and see what our 5-volt rail is at. Oh, well, look at that. We're pretty much right on the money. 5.179 is not bad. I'm going to lower it just a tiny little bit. Oh, that's a little too much, guys. There we go. We're getting close. It don't take much. I'm not lying. All right, that's pretty good. 5.142 again between 5.1 and 5.2 is your ideal number so at 5.14243 roughly ish uh, that's good we can go ahead at this point and disconnect the multimeter and then start powering up or I mean, sorry hooking up our game PCB so it's already adjusted. We're ready to rock. So let's move on to the next step, guys. Okay, now that we have our power supply adjusted, let's go ahead and get this mounted into place. So right down here, there's already a screw in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that. Like you see, there's a little moon-shaped slot right there. We'll slide that down. Okay. And then another screw is going to go in the top place right here. Just like so. Now we're going to want to tighten down our bottom screw before we completely tighten down our top screw. 
just so we have everything kind of aligned up in a way. Make sure all your wires are out of the way. Just like so. Okay, let's tighten this top one down so our power supply is where it needs to be. Look at that, we're good to go. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and readjust you a tiny little bit so you can see me putting the wires in on all the terminals. And then from there, we can go ahead and test this and see if it works. So we'll be right back. All right guys, so we're all mounted into place. My wife is actually holding the camera for me because I could not get it set up just right so you can see what I'm doing here. But what we need to do is we need to hook up our AC inputs and then of course our DC outputs. We also technically have an AC output here too when it comes to the monitor. So what we're going to do, at the very bottom we have AC neutral, then AC line, and then our field ground. Okay. This wire here, which should be a green wire, is our AC, or I'm sorry, our field ground. Alright, so this will be the last one we hook up. Um, these wires, which are actually proper, we have our white wire, which is, which is our AC neutral, and we have our black wire, which is our AC line, or AC hot, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and set up our AC neutral, which is our white wire. And we also want to set up our AC neutral for our monitor, which is also a white wire. So, we're going to get these two hooked up and screwed down into place. Just like so. Now, typically, like with a CRT monitor... You would have your monitor's AC ran off an isolation transformer with its own fuse. But a flat screen monitor, it doesn't matter. You can run it right off of this and it's going to work just fine because they're designed to be plugged directly into the outlet. Next is going to be our hot wire, which is our black wire, which is also known as the line wire. Alright, so we'll get that set up and we'll do the same with our monitor as well. Okay. We'll tighten that down real good right there. Okay. The final one we want to hook up when it comes to the AC circuit is our field ground. Okay. This is how we take all the excess electricity and exchange it out of the game so you don't get zapped or shocked on any metal part of the cabinet. Uh, and of course the monitor also has one. As you can see the monitor is green. That's the color it's supposed to be. This cabinet, whoever wired up before me, they decided to use the white wires. It, as long as you trace it to make sure you know what you're hooking up, you'll be fine. The color of wire really doesn't matter, it's just more of to make it easier to know where you're supposed to hook everything up to. Get that tightened down real fast. Okay, so all of our ACs are hooked up. Now it's time to do the DC outputs, which basically run our video converter board and our main monitor itself. So, our first one here is a positive 12. And on this game board, it's going to be orange. A lot of the times it can be yellow. So if you see a yellow wire or an orange wire, you're looking at a 12 volt DC. Uh, I'm running our video converter board off the 12 volt rail. So I'm going to hook my red wire from the video converter board. Which again, I know it doesn't match up. You should technically put that on your 5 volt. But you can do 5 volt or 12 volt on the video converter. And I'm going to use 12 because in this particular game, the 12 volt actually only runs the sound. It doesn't do anything else, which I guess in all reality is most games out there anyway. So we'll get that tightened down real good. Alright, 
Next, we have our negative 5, which on this board is a blue wire. A lot of the times, a blue wire can also be a 3.3 volt. Um, I'm used to seeing, like, actually, yeah, you know, blue wire is pretty common for the negative 5 when it comes to the oddball games like this, so just make sure you trace it back. All right, the next two lugs are our grounds, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook one of the grounds that goes to the game board up on its very own lug, and then the ground that hooks up the video converter, I'm also going to put that on its very own lug. It really doesn't matter. It just kind of makes it easier to wire up. And then after this, our last one to set up is our positive 5 which on this game board is red, and that's actually the typical color for a positive 5, DC, is red. So we'll go ahead and get that cranked down. And there we go. We got our power supply hooked up. So we'll be right back, guys, and you'll see if all this worked out or if I fried the board. So let's go from there. Alright, now that we're all hooked up, let's go ahead and power the game up and make sure that we did it right. So here we go. Oh, so far so good. Fuses didn't blow. Our lights on for our power supply. And our lights on our video converter board. There's no light on the PCB unfortunately, so let's go check out the screen and see what's up. All right, so it's working. Sweet. Now, let me get clean in there. Oh wait, that's right. I turned the volume down on the PCB. I did that a while ago. There we go. There. It's working just fine. Sound and everything. Sweet. So, that's how you install a power supply that's brand new right out of the box. Uh, it's going to be pretty much basic. That's just a switching power supply. There are going to be some games that you have to have a very special power supply for and the best way to find out is just check the schematics and make sure. This game particularly because it's a JAMA connector it can use a switching power supply. It's just basic voltages. Nothing unique or special. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.